It's Joe and Lisa with Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you all for joining us today. We want to uh, talk to you a little bit today. Lisa had a great idea yesterday. We were having breakfast with some new friends and sharing our journey on how we decided to come here and how we got here. And Lisa thought that'd be a great idea just to share that with everyone. Yeah, we really haven't gone through that part. Yeah, it's um, our, you know how we actually wound up deciding about here um, we were living in Texas on our farm, and this was about six years before we decided to come for a visit. And um, I actually had started when we were living in Round Rock looking at places before we had the farm. Yeah. Um, Lisa and I were working like seven days a week. You know, she was working at a high-tech firm and then working on the weekends, and um, it was just um, too much. And we started looking around, and, you know, I decided to say, hey, honey, we got to we're going to die if we keep this up. Yeah. <laughs> so what about we, you know, buy a weekend home somewhere on a lake and, um, you know, get it, start getting away on the weekends and just stop all this nonsense. And so I started looking at lake houses online and stuff and going, well, we can afford the, the lake house. We can't afford the taxes. Yeah. The taxes are so high. So and we were high. on the rat race. I mean, we'd work all week long from sunup to sundown and beyond. Then come home and do your daily chores. <clears throat> and then the weekend comes, you're so exhausted, you have no energy left, and you're just recovering just so you can go back to work again. Yeah, we were on the hamster wheel for sure. And um, we really, um, you know, were kind of unhappy with that. Couldn't figure out how to get around it. We, we bought the farm, and uh, so I was farming on our aquaponic farm and, um, and also doing shooting instruction. So definitely seven full days a week. Mm -hmm. And Lisa would help, you know, on the weekends and when she got home from work. But um, I was looking around online while we were still living in Round Rock. And a friend of mine had gone to um, uh, Costa Rica mm -hmm. and came back all excited about Costa Rica. And mind you, this was almost 15 years ago. The Costa Rica's time has passed, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but um, so I started looking at Costa Rica and then I eventually I ran into... Gary Scott's uh, International Living Magazine. And so I started reading Gary Scott's stuff and I uh, soon came to realize that, you know, going to one of Gary Scott's things probably wasn't for us. But um, he, in his uh, articles, et cetera, had um, mentioned Ecuador. And it really opened the possibility because we were thinking we'd have to retire in the States. And how can you do that? Because it's so expensive no matter where you end up. You just, like the farm, we would have to work until we died just to be able to pay the taxes. And we just couldn't get a good, we would never be able to get ahead. No, we just, we'd work till we fell out, basically. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, we looked at Mexico, Panama, all these different areas, you know, and I know Mexico pretty well. But um, we, we hadn't considered Ecuador until I saw it on the International Living uh, website. So we... Um, Started investigating Ecuador online. And I mean, I just spent five years pouring through information. And uh, finally, one day, Lisa says, you know, if we're going to move to this country. You should probably go. <laughs> <laughs> we should go visit <laughs> go once visit, first. See if we're really going to like it or not. And so uh, I'm like, OK, so let's go. And we finally made plans to come. <clears throat> and we came. And we landed uh, at you know, in Quito, flew down to Loja um, and came to Vilcabamba and stayed at Ishkaluma Hosteria. Yeah, we started here in Vilcabamba at Ishkaluma, which is a really special place to visit. Yeah, great, great place. What a place to relax and unplug, yeah. you know. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, that first trip down, by the time we got to Ishkaluma, we hadn't eaten, I think, in 24 hours because of the trip. And we drug ourselves, yeah, we hadn't slept, so we drug ourselves to the rooms, which everything seemed uphill at that point because we were so tired. We crashed for a while, and then we got up and went back uphill to go have breakfast at the, at the restaurant in the hotel, and then 
back down, back to sleep. So the first day, I mean, we were just nothing. I, I mentioned to Lisa then, I said, everything's uphill in this country. Everything was uphill. Coming and going. <laughs> it's all uphill. And it was just a pretty interesting concept. But. Yeah. So uh, we went out and looked at some properties the next couple of days around Vilcabamba. We actually looked at this property um, that it was not on the market. Yeah. Uh, the lady who owned it was involved in a lawsuit. And um, so we decided, well, you know, we had a five-year plan at that time to move to Ecuador because I really felt like to sell our farm and wrap everything up was going to take a full five years. And um, Lisa had some stock and stuff at her company we wanted to hang out for. Mm -hmm. And so we thought it'd be a full five years. And so we kind of dismissed the idea, even though we really liked the place. And so um, off we went. We went up to Cuenca, took the Ishkluma van to Cuenca. Mm -hmm. and Met some really interesting people along the way. Yes, there was a bunch of uh, gringo expats from Cuenca who were here visiting. Yeah. And they talked to us the four and a half hour ride all the way to Cuenca. You don't want to live in Vilcabamba. It's full yeah. of dope heads and crazy people. And, you know. It's like, then why do you visit there? And I'm like, I don't know. It kind of felt like home to me. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. But, but we were open. We were still looking around, trying to figure things out. We didn't know where we were going to land at the point. We didn't. So we get to um, to Cuenca, and we go out with a real estate agent there. Very nice young man, Darnell. Yeah. Shout out to you, buddy, if you watch this. So, um, I mean, this guy looks like he comes off the pages of GQ. Really nice guy. <laughs> he does. And um, so Darnell took us out. We looked at uh, a couple of houses in Tarkey right outside of Cuenca. A really nice uh, earthquake-proof house, yeah. what they would call seismic built. Beautiful home. Um, we went up north, looked at some properties, and nothing just really clicked for me. Everything, you pretty much had to drive back into Cuenca if you wanted to buy anything of any substance. Well, it was really was funny, though. Drive. Every house, we, every time we went out to go look at property, the first house they would show us, you couldn't drive all the way there you'd have to hike up the mountain to get to the house. Yeah, this uh, the one house there in Tarkey, I mean, the driveway was a 45 degree angle up. Taxi driver said, there's no way I can drive up there. Yeah. Lisa says, I'm waiting in the car. Well, I had already done this in Vilcabamba. So <laughs> we, the first house we looked at here, we the had road had slid off the side of the mountain and we had to hike up the narrow path to get to the house. I'm going like, no. Yeah, not so in, my deal. It targets. She says, "I'm not doing this." <laughs> so she waits in the cab, and me and Darnell hike up this driveway. By the time we get to the house, I fall out on the ground. <gasps> <gasps> I can't breathe. You know, elevation's getting to me. It's just, and he's going, "Are you going to be okay? You going to be okay?" I can see he's really getting worried. Finally, I could speak. Yeah. Anyway, I'll be fine. Just give me a minute. <laughs> and so uh, we uh, looked at this house. It was under construction, about half finished. And the woman, I guess, who had been building it, gave up on it. And so we decided that that driveway was definitely not for <laughs> us. And so we came back down, and um, we just didn't feel good about the area around Cuenca and, um, you know, the altitude, a lot, of, a lot of things at play there that just didn't sit well for us. And don't get us wrong. There are some really, really pretty places, but we are not big city people. And everywhere you went on the outskirts of Cuenca, we felt like you'd have to drive way back into Cuenca to go get stuff, which the traffic in Cuenca at the time was really bad and the emissions on the vehicles was not good. It's all gotten better, but it just didn't fit for us. Yeah, don't let us dissuade you about the Cuenca area. Lots of people live there and very happy. Oh, yeah. Um, but we just knew it wasn't for us. No, it's our vacation space. Yeah. Yeah, we go there for two or three days, kind of get away from things. Yeah. So um, we go back to Texas, <clears throat> and um, I decide, well, you know, it's going to take me a while to get the farm, get the barn cleaned out, get things straightened up, get the house in order, put a new roof on the house. And so we started uh, working on things, and, you know, we really did think it was going to be five years, but um, so I finally I got the house ready in July. That was in the end of January when we first came. Right. And so that was, uh, got the farm ready to put on the market in July and I took, took it to a realtor and he says, well, I don't know, uh, you know, probably going to have to be a cash offer because of all those greenhouses and stuff, you know, not sure how quickly we can sell it. I said, I got plenty of time, man. I got five years. 
where no no realtor really wants to hear that. Yeah. But I'm like, it, you know, it's okay. Um, we don't sell it right away. I'm good. Yeah. Well, we sold it within 30 days, and uh, we agreed to stay behind and and teach the new owners how to run things. And so we did that. We hung out and uh, helped them for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, and then and and then in that process, we started selling things. Um, we, we had like four vehicles at that time. And yeah. so we sold all the vehicles one at a time. And, um, we had garage sales and sold We had garage everything. sales for, for months and we sold everything. So at that point, there's no going back. You kind of committed to go. <clears throat> yeah, I had to, um, I had a bunch of pew pews and I had to get rid of those. So. Um, that Just was a process in itself. All kinds of things, but it's amazing how much you accumulate over time when you go to sell it all. Yeah, we, we had, you know, one of those fancy select comfort beds and oh, yeah. all of that. We sold that. We had, you know, $5,000 worth of bedroom furniture. I mean, that went Italian leather couches, all that kind of stuff. All the good stuff. Yeah. I wish but I had that bed right now. Yeah, but you let go of all that, and it's uh, a little bit sad, and it's a little bit liberating to let it all go. It really is. I, I mean, and we decided we were going to live a lot more simply when we came here. Yeah. Now, we could have, you know, had a container for, you know, ten to $15,000 in six months wait time and had the container delivered here with, you know, our stuff. And, and on retrospect, there's a couple of things I wish I'd done it with my my really good tools, <laughs> you know, I wish I had brought those and I, I didn't. I don't know. I think the thing you miss the most is the bed. The bed, yeah. <laughs> the select comfort bed was super nice. Yeah, it was. The mattresses here are, eh, you know, not my favorite thing. Mm. So, yeah, you know, that was a process. We sold stuff, you know, online, Craigslist, mm. um, and we got rid of everything. And, I mean, the last day we were there, we were still getting rid of stuff. Yeah. We actually left a few boxes with my aunt in Texas. Mm -hmm. And um, then uh, we got on the plane and we came here. We we arrived here on the same day that we visited one year later. Yeah, we came at the end of January and we were so amazed. Our tickets were like $150 a piece. Yeah. Now granted, that's one way, but we're going like, wow, with this these kind of prices, we can really travel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Things changed. <laughs> Things changed. But I would say that, you know, it truly was a God thing. We really were counting on five years. We were here one year later to the day. We did give up some money um, mm -hmm. to do that, no doubt. You um, make choices in life and in, in trying to get to a better place. But I will say when we landed here, um, there was nothing available. So we did. We went to Loja yeah. first because we yeah. thought, well, maybe we'll <clears> stay in Loja and get an apartment in Loja and uh, then eventually move to Vilca. That didn't work out so well. Yeah, we were in a hotel in Loja two days, and Loja was under construction at the time. <laughs> they had ripped up all the sidewalks and were putting the overhead utilities underground. Yeah. So the whole city was dust and jackhammers, and when it wasn't dust, it was mud. Yeah, and you did really hard to get hot water in the tub, shower, sauna thing. And mm -hmm. uh, it was really different. And, and at that point, it was like, okay, we just we just have to get back out of here. Yeah, the city was driving me nuts. I really thought we'd buy an apartment there and, and while we built something in, in Vilcabamba and then later lease out the apartment as, you know, an investment. And lesson learned. When you stay in uh, hosteria of any sort, in any large city, don't let them put you on the street side. Definitely yeah. get on the back side. Always ask for a room on the quiet side, yeah. not the street <laughs> side. And yeah, so I called up the realtor, hey, get us out of here. Yeah. And so um, we actually, we moved to Ishkaluma. Went we back to Ishkaluma. We were in Ishkaluma about two weeks, I would we say. We were because literally there were no houses for rent because little did we know we came right before the time people rent for Carnival. And so everything was kind of locked down. Yeah, and we had, um, you know, we had been looking at houses and looking mm -hmm. around and, and we had a price range in mind we did not want to exceed. Yeah. And um, I'm glad we stuck to our guns. Everything that was online the year before we came, mm -hmm. there was nothing even close to that price range. 
Well, that and and again, Carnival. Everybody. Carnival was here. Yeah. Everybody had already secured renting these places so we just we really struggled to find a place just to rent so we found a, a place we could rent by the month in uh, san joaquin mm -hmm. and um so we moved in this little two-bedroom house there and we were there a couple of months and uh realtor called and said hey you remember the house that we looked at when you visited here you know up on the mountain i went yeah he said well she won the lawsuit and she'd like to sell it and so we went well, let's go take another look. Yeah, and I will say, I was not in love with the house. The house was not even close to something I was looking for. But the property and the setup on the property and the road to get to the property. The views. The views, all of that met our criteria. And the way I looked at the house was, if we got it at a good price, we could fix a lot of the things that were wrong with the house. And, and the house was really way bigger than what we wanted. A lot. Um, it was as big as the house we had in Texas, if not bigger. But it was at least as big as our but house in Texas. not laid out efficiently. Literally half yeah. the kitchen was in the living room. Now, everybody that visits our house loves it and thinks it's great. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's still a bit big, but we've managed to fill it up with some junk. We have filled it up and we've made use of it, but it was, it's, it was almost like moving into a warehouse because the the main room, just the layout was really bad. Yeah, very echoey. Um, and we, we did, you know, because we didn't bring the furniture. We showed up here with four suitcases. I kid yeah. you not, back when you could take four suitcases on the airline. Yeah. And our suitcases were, you know, absolutely full. And um, so we didn't have, you know, hardly any furniture. There was a bed in the bedroom. And we had a couch and chairs made really reasonable oh yeah uh, we had a, a couch and a love seat made that was i think less than a thousand bucks oh it was 500 500 yeah 500 and i i ordered two love seats because i don't really care for the sofa part and so i ordered two love seats we ended up with a sofa and a love seat but. yeah we went okay well you know that okay. works <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so um and then we found on facebook um a really rustic uh, table and chairs for the kitchen area. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was 500 bucks, I think, for that and all the bar stools. Yeah, and we got a table with... All handmade. Six chairs. Um, we got the the two chair, two really nice, interesting chairs with the That's right. center we got table. That's right, too. And then four bar stools. Four bar stools and the table and six chairs. Yeah. Yeah. So we got all that for about 500 or so. Yeah, very and, rustic, uh, but it, it worked. Yeah, I had Taxi bring it back here for us. So so that worked out on the furniture end of things. And, um, you know, I, I got to say the things that, um, you know, that we thought we needed here, we actually turned out we didn't need a lot of those things. No, I, and this comes into the flexibility part is you really have to, you're not going to find the perfect home. You may not find a home at all in the area you're looking for. Um, so then you have to start figuring out what what you really want to keep and what's really, really important to you and what types of things you can let go of. And perfect furniture is one of them. So we got functional furniture um, until we could figure things out and make changes. But a lot of things on the house, we were going like, eh, but as you live with them, you go, well, it's not that bad. <laughs> I can settle with it. And we remodeled the bathroom. That was our first uh, project after building the casita. Yeah. Um, we remodeled the bathroom. And, um, you know, our architect and um, builder, Milton Mina, did a wonderful job. The bathroom is so good. It really Augusto is. Augusto did a wonderful job on the tile. And it turned out really, really well. And yeah. I think Milton was even excited how well that turned out. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, that was all good. I, and, you know, again, we had a certain price range in mind we wanted mm -hmm. to stay with. Yours could be different. Yeah. But I was only 60 when we came here. And so I was looking at, well, five years till I get on Social Security. I don't want to go through our nest egg. We pay too much for a house. You know, and then we might, what if, you know, I have to have heart surgery or something. Um, you know, I don't want to put us in, a, in jeopardy here. 
And so um, the price range was right where we wanted to be. And uh, so it worked out. It was just a God thing. It worked out well. Um, and I, I got to say, we gave up money. Um, Lisa's job, had she hung around, probably would have walked away with a lot more money. Um, but I may not have lived that long. May not have lived that long. Very stressful job. You know, it was killing me working in the heat all day long. Oh, yeah. And when you're a shooting instructor, you're on your feet in the heat all day long. I have yeah. plantar fasciitis, which is a killer by itself. And then to be in the heat on your feet really yeah, the uh, heat kept exhaustion. that irritated. Yeah, heat yeah. exhaustion. It, it's, it's all in what you plan to do. And, and we are extremely blessed to have found this place. Yeah. And I will say that since, even after we got here, even after we bought this place, um, and made changes to it and whatnot, we still kind of cap an eye on the real estate and see what's out there. I don't think we found anything in our price range that would have been better. And I would say one of the reasons that really attracted me to this place was not the house. It was the fact that we had so many fruiting trees fully matured all on the property all the way around. Yeah, and, and we went to go close on this property. We met the attorney down in Aloha mm -hmm. who's going to do the closing for us, and we sat down with him, and and so he pulls out paperwork. By the way, you get two lots, yeah. and we didn't <laughs> realize that at the time, but we got a secondary lot, which is a very small lot, and but that's where our greenhouses are on the second lot. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, that was kind of a bonus, and um, we, we really enjoy this. We don't show a lot of videos of our property, and... The videos that we do show are going to be specific mm -hmm. of a particular thing or area. Um, many people have asked us to do a walking tour around our property. I don't think we'll do that because of security uh, concerns. Yeah. We want to um, not get everybody um, a bird's eye view of what our security looks like. Yeah. And uh, you've met a few members of our security team already. <laughs> our little aliens. Yeah, our little aliens. Mm -hmm. One's laying right here. You see over there. But... Yeah. Um, yeah, and so, I mean, it was the whole thing was just put together. A God thing just made it all work out perfectly. Um, we had the right lawyer at closing, got things right. You, you got to be very careful at closing. Read your paperwork very carefully. Mm -hmm. I picked up that they had the descriptions reversed on the properties. I read Spanish well enough to realize that. The, the attorney went, you're right, sent his assistant off. Assistant changed everything, came back, and it was all good. We uh, were right there at the uh, notary's office, and the notary, uh, you know, had us sign, stamp things, do it all. Expect, um, you know, house closings to run a little bit of money because the notary's fees are so high. Yeah. Um, we're going through right now doing my will. Um, the price of my will is very inexpensive, but the notary fees... If you're under 65 or about 300 to 300 bucks, where you're over 65, your notary fees are like 40 bucks. So yeah, it's a, a big difference. Big difference. So I've waited till I'm now over 65 and I'm doing my will. Yeah, but I think one of the main things is, is we sold everything with the intention of moving here. Well, to Loha. Loha didn't work for us. So then we moved here. Um, it is good to rent if you can find a rental. Um, a lot of people don't stick because they can't find anything. And I will say most realtors encourage you to build. That's not an easy process. Um, we have some friends that came and they've been in the building process for, he said that they've been here in town renting for two and a half years. And they just moved out to their property. Just moved out. Now they weren't in a big hurry to get it done, but. No, but. Things are different here, and and don't put a pin in the map and say this is where I'm going to move because once you get on the ground, it may or may not work for you. Yeah, be flexible and ready to to change. And um, like I said, I was getting a little discouraged because we weren't finding a house that we liked. We really mm -hmm. were getting worried because we had finally gotten a rent place. We were not super happy in San Joaquin, and. Not that it's not a beautiful neighborhood, but everybody that burns a crop, to me, it seemed like if they burned anywhere in Vilcabamba, that smoke went right up yeah. that valley to San Joaquin, and we couldn't breathe at night. And you can't leave your windows closed because it's a little bit warm. 
Yeah, and that Kukanama is right there across the river from San Joaquin, and mm -hmm. a lot of uh, sugarcane and different farms along there. Yeah. So they do a lot of burning, and uh, that's that was bothering us. Um, yeah. We know we didn't want to live in an HOA. We've yeah. done that once before and swore we'd never do it again, and San Joaquin is an HOA. And I think it's probably equivalent to HOAs that we came from in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of the same so, types of problems. Yeah. And so um, we knew we didn't want to stay in San Joaquin. As no. beautiful as it is there, it was just not for us. Um, yeah. So we're in the right place. I'll say <clears throat> somebody on Facebook this week was lashing out about a property that was listed for rent. It's a big house, three bedrooms, you know, huge house. And it's, it's um, at the end of a long, dusty road, but <laughs> beautiful house, great views. And, it, and they're advertising for $600 a month. Well, um, this person was fussing about the price, and I'm going, you know, you just don't understand. Everything's gone up. You yeah. can't rent in Lisbon, Portugal, an apartment for less than $1,500 a month right now. A one-bedroom apartment. A one-bedroom apartment. If you yeah. want a two, two to three-bedroom, you're looking at 2500 a month in euros, not in dollars, in euros. Yeah. So... Um, there's a lot of places that has gone up. It's gone up, you know, some here in Vilcabamba. And I realize people move here because they want to live a little cheaper, live, you know, more economically. But don't cut yourself short. If you can't afford some cost of living increases over the years, you maybe shouldn't move here. You need to think about those things. Well, and it's it's a, a fact of life. Prices don't go down, they only go up, and they're not going to stay stagnant. They can't because of what happens around the world, and it costs more to get things in. I will say we were talking about it, and we do have inflation here, but it's nothing like we can see from um, looking at videos and stuff from around the world. I mean, it's not been that drastic, but the prices have gone up since we've moved here. Yeah, I have a friend in Madeira, Portugal right now that I'm keeping in touch with and um, seeing how his journey is going. I think he's been over there about 30 days, interested in finding out uh, what's going on with him. And so we chat a little bit on email. But um, I, I watch a lot of videos on other countries. I do research. Yesterday I was researching in uh, Lisbon and looking at prices and, oh my goodness, very, very high. Mexico has gone up. Uh, cost of visas in Mexico has gone up. Um, yeah. Paraguay is somewhat reasonable um, in parts of Peru, but everything's going up. Now, the house that we live in here, when we bought it, it was rented. We had a renter inside. Yeah. And it was renting at that time, which was almost six years ago, at $750 a month. Mm -hmm. So this person complaining about a $600 a month rent for a three-bedroom house, our house, you know, we're 10 to 15 minutes from town it's a really a two bedroom house, even yeah. though it's large. Yeah. Um, at seven fifty, this house would rent for a thousand now. Um, I don't think there's any way it wouldn't rent for a thousand now. Yeah, yeah, and and it's it's better laid out now because we have made some changes to it, so it's got more form to the main room. And the house we rented in San Joaquin when we first came, we were paying six hundred dollars a month for a two bedroom there. It was a cute little house, but. It got no airflow. It was yeah. so hot. Very well built, good construction, but just, yeah, it wasn't situated well for yeah. us. Now, I understand the new owner's done some remodeling and, and helped a lot of that out. Yeah. So, you know, kudos to her. Um, but you won't find much in San Joaquin for rent for less than a 1000 Not um, too much anymore. Yeah, I never see anything pop up there for under a 1000 anymore. At the time, six hundred was the cheapest thing we could find. Oh yeah. Uh, we looked at several houses there were seven fifty or eight hundred mm. at that time. Those houses are going to be over a grand. Yeah, I don't even know if they have anything to rent in there anymore. But yeah, it's um. You just have to when you're leaving your <clears throat> home country and you make that true decision. You really need to uh, be flexible when you hit the ground because everything that you think. You know, you don't know. <laughs> and it changes. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we we just lost two different sets of friends here mm -hmm. who moved up to northern Ecuador. 
And um, for a while, um, yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe they'll be back. Maybe they won't. Yeah. But but I get it. You know, they don't have any attachment. They want to experience the whole country, and that's really a smart thing to do. Um, we're the type of people we like to nest. You know, have our little gardens and stuff. And so this was kind of the right spot for us. I could not live in altitudes greater than 9,000 feet. I would have a lot of trouble with that. No, and when you get here, I mean, we came from sea level. So when we got here, there was a um, adjustment period. Um, if you take, if you can get some altitude pills or something, it definitely helps Yep. Um, to allow your lungs time to adapt. And you can get oxygen here, you know, yeah. it's available. Um, and there are some people who move to Vilcabamba that don't do well with, you know, the altitude here. You know, 4,500 to 5,500 feet is kind of typical in Vilcabamba itself. Um, and some of those people wind up moving to the coast mm -hmm. and uh, live at sea level. Yeah. And because of different, you know, health conditions. And yeah. So there's options. And uh, But that was our journey here. This is how we got here. Good, the, world, the bad, the here? ugly, and surprises and not surprises. It was, it was a journey. Yeah, we really, um, God had his hand on us and mm -hmm. made everything work out the way it was. Really was really concerned that either Lisa or I would have a heart attack where we were mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, not to live a, be able to live a ripe old age. Yeah. And we wanted, you know, um, this point in our life for us to just have some fun and get off the hamster wheel. Oh, and it has been really good to not be on the hamster wheel. Yeah, at first you think, man, I'm going to be bored, you know, there's nothing to do. And now it's just like, would you please quit inviting me to birthday parties? <laughs> <laughs> no, you like to visit. Here we have a lot of birthday parties, a lot of lunches. Today we have lunch with a big group. Uh, yesterday was breakfast morning. Well, we live a little bit out of town, and so we do make it a point on Saturdays and Sundays to go in and gather with people and have communion and just enjoy life and enjoy people and uh, be a, a true part of everyone's life. Yeah, we uh, Friday we were in Loja, uh yeah. shopping trip and met friends there for lunch and, uh, you know, just had a great day and mm. um, got home by three o'clock and yeah. ready for a nap. <laughs> yeah, big day in Loja. So... Um, you know, uh, it, it, and I got to tell you, all your electronics here may not be as good as you get in the U.S., but they're not bad. We had no. to buy a new TV for her mother yesterday because something happened to the memory on her old TV. So we got an internet-ready TV, 50-inch, with 4K, true 4K, 390 bucks. Yeah, it was really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> At the grocery store. Yeah, um, Granite Key. Granite so, Key, yeah. It's kind of like a mini Walmart. Yeah, it's kind of what it is. And so they had these on sale. They had about six of them, and we grabbed one, mm -hmm. and she's happy as can be with it. Yeah. So everything you need, you can find here. you got to look sometimes a little harder. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hers, she's super happy. It's got a button for Netflix and a button for YouTube so she can toggle backwards and forth. So she's all good. She watches yeah. internet TV just like we do. Yep. You can get um, Dish TV here. Mm -hmm. We don't. Um, <clears throat> we just pay for internet and we watch, you know, Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime, whatever. Yeah, you pay for whatever you're going to get no matter where you are. And I think if you did like a Dish TV, I think it's like 40, 40 to $50 a month. Um, yeah. Netflix runs fifteen. Ten ninety nine. Yeah. Uh, I think it's up to fifteen dollars a month. So it just depends on what you want. And then YouTube, of course, you're just paying for the internet, which is very inexpensive. Here. In our high speed um, fiber optic internet here at our house, since I'm over sixty five, runs mm -hmm. me twenty dollars a month. Yeah. You know, love so, it. Yeah, we have so much stuff running on that internet line. Yeah. Um, it's amazing how much we have going on with that. You know, two or three TVs going all the time, laptops, computers, um, cell phones, all working off of it, mm -hmm. off the Wi-Fi. Yeah. And uh, but th but it's really good. You know, great bandwidth. It is. I will say, like any internet company anywhere in the world, some days are better than others, and some days you have outages, but they work diligently to get them back up and running. But I tell you what I don't miss. I don't miss Usenet. Nah. Shame on you people. Shame on you. 
<laughs> I would never do business with that company. Well, ever I don't know. In my I life. think internet companies in the U.S. just when you look at the price differences between internet in the states and internet here, it's like who was making all the money because man, they were really overpriced, overcharging everybody. It's kind of like pharmaceuticals in the U.S. versus here. Yeah, I tell people yeah. I take a little potassium pill for my blood pressure and my heart. Yeah. And um, in the U.S., with insurance and my copay, that would cost me $25, 30 bucks a month um, with my insurance. Yeah. So here I get the exact same pill with no insurance, no nothing. It costs me 5 bucks a month. Explain that. $5 a month. Yeah, there, there's no restructuring that. That's just greed. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, we're happy with the decisions that we made to get here. Yeah. Um, you know, there's been a few things I wish we'd done differently, but for the most part, everything has gone extremely well. Mm -hmm. I, I will say, again, let me reinforce the fact that if you don't have enough money to be able to absorb a 20% increase in cost of living mm -hmm. over five years, don't move here because it can happen. Mm -hmm. um, Ecuador for a long time didn't have much cost of living increase. And during the pandemic, we got it. Man, yeah. boom. And so rental prices have gone up possibly 15, 10 to 15%. Other parts mm -hmm. of the world, they've doubled in Texas. Oh, my gosh. Try renting an apartment in Austin, Texas. Well, and, and like anywhere, it's supply and demand. I mean, they've really done a lot in town here in Vilca to add more <laughs> rental properties because they're fully booked most of the time. There's always... Um, there's not always a place to rent. And we've had people looking and go, we just can't find anything. And some of it's because you're looking for something very unique that you may not find here. But sometimes it's just no availability. And the, the quality of construction, you're not always going to find what you're used to. Oh, no. Um, what you become accustomed to. So just no, prepare no, no. yourselves for that. Um, sometimes you're going to find something that's wonderful, grandeur. and Yeah. Nice, yeah. um, but not always. So no. just be willing to compromise a little and and um, do a lot of looking around. Do a lot of looking around. A lot of looking around and, and spread it out. There's a lot of neat little towns. I can't wait. Next time we go to Cuenca, um, a friend was telling us she could take this back road to go to Zamora and all these other little towns on the way to Cuenca. I think that'd be a really fun road trip. Yeah, we want to shoot some video over in Zamora anyway, so. Yeah. That's one for the upcoming videos. Yeah. Okay, so that's how we got here. And uh, that's our story. Hope you enjoy it. If you got some questions, reach out, please. And again, we just appreciate all the wonderful comments. And if you have an idea for a new video, let us know. Yeah, hit us with your best shot. Yeah. Okay, ciao for now. Ciao for now. Bye.